wins, 30 of those coming by way of a knockout. He is a three division world champion, having captured a world title at lightweight, at super lightweight, and he's been welterweight champion of the world since 2018 after a victory over Jeff Horn. One thing about this gentleman, he's embedded in the fabric of what it is to be from Omaha, Nebraska. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the, un the WBO welterweight champion of the world, the undefeated Terrence Bud Crawford. <laughs> Terrence is joined by his trainer, Brian Bomack McIntyre. Looking to go to 40 and 0 on Saturday, July 29th. It is great to see Terrence Bud Crawford. Terrence, great to see you. Before we turn it over to the media for questions, first of all, Terrence, it's no secret that this is a fight that the world has been waiting for, so much so that your kids were asking you about when you were gonna collide against Errol Spence Jr. Now that we're 10 days away from this mega matchup, what does this mean to you? Well, it means everything. Like I said, this is gonna put the cherry on top uh, for my career, and I've been waiting for this moment for a long time now, and it's here now, and I can't wait till Saturday to get it on. You got here on Sunday. Uh, why did you decide to come to Las Vegas nearly two weeks before the fight? Is that something customary or is it just extra added things that you're trying to do to better equip yourself for this huge fight coming up on July 29th? Uh, just, you know, come uh, get used to the heat, get used to the atmosphere and everything. So uh, come fight night, we'd be 110% prepared. I find a question before I turn it over to the medium. When you fought Ricky Burns and you had to go over there to capture your first world title, did you ever think that you would be here in Las Vegas headlining a massive pay-per-view, a fight that the world has been clamoring for for such a long time? Not at all. Like I always said before, when, when, when I fought Ricky Burns, my only thing was winning a world championship title. Uh, that was my dream, that was my goal, and I succeed that one night, and the rest is, you know, extra credit. All right, right now I'm going to turn it over to the media for questions. Raise your hand, ask your question, wait for the microphone to come to you, and we will go ahead and ask questions to the reigning WBO welterweight champion of the world, Terrence Bud Crawford. Hey, good afternoon, Terrence. Welcome to Las Vegas. How are you adjusting to the climate and the elevation up in here and the heat? Oh, uh, man, I'm, I'm adjusting real good. You know, it's just dry heat. Back in Omaha, it's real uh, humid. Humid. So, uh, that's one thing that you got to adjust to. Well, we, we see some of your workouts online that you're posting looking pretty, uh, pretty grueling going uphill. Uh, legs feel fine, everything is going to be fine on fight night. Is that what you came out early, like you just mentioned? Oh, no, I, I ain't worried about my legs or anything else. I'm 100%, I'm 110% prepared. Uh, Sam Gordon, Las Vegas Review Journal. Terrence, welcome to Las Vegas. Uh, historically, the welterweight division has been a, a, one of the most important in boxing. How do you view the legacy of the division as it pertains to boxing history, and why are fights like this important moving it forward? Well, I think the welterweight boxing had a lot of great fights in the uh, past, and this is going to be a great fight uh, next Saturday. And I think uh, there's a bright future for the welterweight division uh, in the near future as well, with a lot of great talent coming up the uh, rankings, a lot of fighters coming from 140 to 147. So I think the welterweight division is still a hotbed. Cynthia Conde from Best Women's Boxing Show period. Terrence Crawford, a lot of people have been mentioning this fight is a throwback fight. It could be a hack of Kearns. Do you agree? And if you don't agree, what fight would you compare it to? Well, I don't compare it to no fight. I compare it to Terrence Crawford and the Arrow Spence Jr. Because at the end of the day, we the one that's fighting. So I don't like to compare myself to no other fight. And in all access episode, Derek went there and said, Mom, Fancy shoes. What did your mom say to that? Oh, she definitely bring her thing. 
that's one thing she's definitely going to do. So we're not worried about what he, what he talked about. All right. Brian Salmon, NBC, Las Vegas. Uh, you said multiple times that you don't necessarily compare your, your fight with one of the fights in the past. You're a sports fan, lots of fan like myself. I know I've watched some fights a million times, like say Mayweather had. Is there a fight that you have, not yourself, that's like your all-time favorite, you know, a couple that you love to watch like, over and over and over again just because of the technicality of the fight or something like that? Not at all. Like I, like I stated before, I haven't watched so much boxing and, and growing up. When I watch boxing now, I fall asleep. You know, so uh, all the fights that I watched, the old fights, the super old fights, uh, I fall asleep, you know, unless it's live. And my last follow up to that, we're well, not to that question, but my follow up is you and this uh, relationship with the UFC and Dana White, is that something that already, you've already had before, or is that kind of a new thing that? Uh, yourself and, and the UFC, you know, the facilities and everything else? Well, I was working out here uh, prior to going to camp. I did a pre-camp here and uh, built a relationship with everybody here in the facility. And, you know, uh, it's a great facility, so why not utilize it? Terrence, over here to your right. Andres over the Sporting News. Uh, my question is, you and Errol both talked about this being a very competitive fight. Would you be disappointed if it was very one-sided on your behalf? It seems like you both want this to be a war of some sort. Not at all. If, if I go in there and win in the first round, I wouldn't be disappointed because I don't get paid for overtime. <laughs> a follow-up is, Errol recently said that he knows how to dig deep, and he's, he said that you're more of glass, and he, that you, he doesn't think you can take the pressure. What is your response to that? You don't have to show him. Terrence, <clears throat> Sean Zatel, FightHype.com. Terrence, you know, Errol is considered the A side coming into this fight, makes, makes a lot of money and whatnot. There's even some speculation. He, been, he wins this fight with you. He could make a big fight with Canelo Alvarez. Does any part of you take that into consideration and think, I, I can't win this fight 115, 113, 75. Do you think it all knockout or uh, not just 75? I got to make it real decisive because everything I just mentioned. Just win the fight. Listen, now we we both uh, prize fighters. We both make a lot of money uh, in the ring. We're gonna make uh, a lot of money come next Saturday, and I don't worry about what he has planned after me or any of that. Uh, I don't worry about going in there and knocking him out. I just worry about going in there and getting the victory, and that's what I'm gonna do next Saturday. Hi, Terrence, my hope. Um, first, I have a message from Chris Cyborg who says good luck. Um, secondly, you already touched a little bit about training here at Apex. I know you've mentioned in the past wanting to potentially do an MMA fight. Does that give you a little bit of extra itch now that you see all these other MMA fighters training around you? Uh, no, not at all. You know, uh, like I said before, I used to wrestle a little bit, but UFC and uh, MMA have never been something that I was planning to do or was training to do. Hey Terrence, I'm a Dawson, hey man. Um, you were mentioning that you just uh, used to wrestle, I know you like basketball as well, do you think you could beat Earl Spence at any sport, not just boxing? <laughs> of course, I think I could beat anybody at any sport, that's just my, my nature of things, uh, like I said, I. I play, I play sports to win. So if I'm going to challenge you or you challenge me, of course I'm going to play to win, and I'm going to believe wholeheartedly that I'm going to win. And that's anybody you can be, Michael Jordan. And we play one on one. I'm going to still believe that I have the ability to beat you. Is anyone you know we're at the apex right now? And you've been around the UFC. Is there anyone in the UFC that you like watching, whether they're a wrestler or a striker? Uh, a lot of them. You know, uh, Aljo. We just, you know, was playing around, joking about basketball and stuff like that. And he just won his last fight. Uh, there's a lot of USC fighters that come come through and they work and we just chat here and there. But, you know, when I watch them, you know, I watch them. And uh, that's one from me. It's a really big fight week in general next week. I've got Inoue and Fulton as well. Um, who have you got in that fight? 
Oh man, I'm, I'm leaning towards folk. I hope he bring, bring it back to the United States. I hope he go out there and do good, and I wish him well. How have you got it in that fight? Do you think you can finish him, or do you think it would be like competitive decision and he gets the W on the school cards? Well, I don't know. I think it's going to be a tough fight for both fellas. And uh, the better man is going to win that day. I just think Fulton is the bigger, stronger guy that not only bigger and stronger, but he has skills too. You know, it's one thing a lot of people say, oh, well, this guy is big, this guy is strong. But skills pay the bills, and Floyd proven that. And folks got the skills to uh, back up his size as well. Thanks, bud. Terrence, right over here. Good to see you, Marcus Vegas, Fight Up TV. What do you feel is one thing that they may be underestimating about you and the game that you bring in this fight? Uh, a, a little bit of everything. You know, like, like this one, one of the reporters just said, you know, I'm glad. Okay, he's gonna break me. He's gonna he's gonna bulldoze me. He's gonna do this. He's gonna do that. Okay, well, he's gonna have to he's gonna have to show me because you know all that is just like fueling the fire, so the fire that's already burned. All the things that people saying, all the things that he's been saying, he's gonna have to prove that he's gonna fight. Him. And then that's where all the answers is gonna be answered. If you had a choice, say whatever happens, happens, and they give you a choice like, hey, you could either have the rematch at 47 or at 154, would you lean one towards the other? I don't know. I don't know. You know, we have to see what he's going to decide because, like I stated before, I'm winning this fight. So I'm not thinking about, you know, what's going to happen with the rematch. I'm winning this first fight, and he's going to have to decide what he's going to do. Since we are in the UFC Apex, how are you doing, Terrence? Got to ask you this question. We're going to have an MMA champion against a boxing champion, Francis Ngannou against Tyson Fury. What shot do you give Francis Ngannou getting the upset of beating Tyson Fury? Zero. <laughs> Zero. And lastly, for your fight, do you think there's going to be a telltale sign where you sense that you break your opponent? in the fight, or do you think you knock them out? How do you envision yourself getting your hand raised? I just envision myself getting my hand rose higher where it comes. Like I said, I don't ever go in there like, oh yeah, I'm about to get this knockout, or yeah, I'm about to beat them all 12 rounds, because a fight is a fight. But at the end of the day, my hand will be rose at the end of the day. Terrence. Uh, right here, Ron Girard, American Urban Radio Networks. Uh, it took so long to make this fight. Uh, everyone anticipated it took so long. Uh, what do you think about, does it, does it give an advantage to you or to Errol uh, that, that, it, that it, it did take so long? Maybe five years ago, would it, the outcome would be different? I believe it's happening at the right time. Uh, all the belts is on the line. More, more to fight for, and what better way to have it than to have it for the undisputed once away uh, title of the world. So when a lot of people say, "Oh, well, this happened too late," or "This happened, this should have happened two years ago," but who, who, who would have said two years would would have been premature? And then what? Then who? Well, we would have had to be our dancing partner. Then what make a fight what we would have had coming off of the fight with each other. So I feel like it's happening at the, the perfect time, and the perfect time is now. All right, we're going to allow Terrence Bud Crawford to go and get ready for his media workout. For the media members, make sure to remain in your seats, and then members of our staff will come and get you to take you into the gym. We appreciate Terrence Bud Crawford for his time with the media. He's going to go and get himself ready to go. For all the media members here, remain in your seats, and we will get ready for the media workout of Terrence Bud Crawford, head of the showdown against Errol Spence Jr., the undisputed welterweight championship of the world.